This is the new hood latch pull uh, for the grill came in with all the hardware. Here's the part number if anyone needs it. And let's put it on. All right, so this guy's gonna slide up in here. And just sit right there. And I'll just tighten this up. And just accordingly. All right. Let me show you guys the magic that happens. This pops out when you pull the hood latch, and you're able to pull it and open the latch. Shut it. You can see it's popped out right now. There's an angle, so we go to hood. Now we're going to pop the latch. Pops up. Turn this out. Pull and up. It's getting a little stuck, but just adjusting it. As you can see, it's supposed to be invisible with the grill. It kind of blends in, acts as one of those tabs. It's really cool. I made an I made an adjustment, so now it should come out easy. Look that hides right in. Doesn't get stuck. So, yeah, that's it for that. All right, let's empty out this tank. You can see. The snow will show us a good amount of uh, debris. Pour some water in there and some baking soda. To neutralize the acid from the vinegar. And then I'm gonna Go to the car wash. Back at the car wash. Now I'm gonna rinse this tank again. Get anything out. Doesn't need to be here. I'm not seeing any big chunks or anything. That's a good sign. Back home, here's the tank, a lot cleaner. There's some minor stuff there. It's not gonna be perfect. Um, all the chunks though are gone, is, and that's what we wanna see. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this out, and I'll seal it with some WD-40 the best I can, and this will be ready to be put back in. All right, time to put the tank back in. Put 
putting the tank back in was easy. I'll wipe that down. Got it in place here. Just gotta get the uh, rubber. Got that in, gas cap, that's in there. Now we'll move on to the hose underneath. All right, we're gonna put this guy in here. Catch it by hand. Now we'll tighten it with a wrench. If you guys can see here. this line on next up we're gonna put on this line right here so that'll just tie into here Tighten it, just gotta make sure of the positioning. for the top one and a seven. Last 
two screws for the fuel pump power and ground and caps. So I'll get to the back hoses and clamps and tighten those down and then we'll move on to the return lines. And that'll be done. Found the, found the last washer. And here we go. So, we're done with our connections here. There we go. Well, this one didn't go in quite how I wanted it to. last okay we'll tighten this tighten this already tighten this already this is on Okay, not too bad of a job, guys. But don't forget to order two fuel pumps for this guy. I'm gonna find a screw for here. And we are done on this side. So we are under the car with crappy lighting. But I need to put this hose on here and the left side with this evaporator. And I'm not going to film it because it's too tight. All right, we got a new old stock fuel sending unit. Took the old one out, pop this guy in like that, and reinstall and tighten. No much fuel we have in the tank, so make sure this gasket seats, and they will only seat. Alright, here we go. Moment of truth. Let's see if she fires. I'm gonna go ahead and prime the system. First, I'll turn the ignition to the on position. And that is good. We'll prime it like two times. Put the car in park, of course. Probably still not getting all the fuel. Okay, here we go. We've got some kind of action here. Oh, that's awesome. Doesn't sound loud. It's firing. But it's dying out. I think it's the injectors, guys. They're probably blocked up, not pushing the fuel through. Okay, well, it starts, it's quiet. Yeah, I think it's definitely the injectors. We're gonna have to take them out and clean them. 
All right, well, we got action, so that's awesome. So we'll, uh, I think I'll just take those injectors out. It's probably my next best bet. Um, we got the flap working now. Show you guys that. That was an issue. It was misaligned, so I adjusted it and now it returns perfectly. Um, there was some crud in the filter in the actual um, CIS fuel injection system, so I'm pretty sure that those injectors aren't allowing fuel flow properly. All right, so my brother Damon already took out the injectors here and he's bench testing them. And as you saw, there was no fluid going through that one. And I did have the camera setting set to time lapse for whatever reason. But we did go ahead and get those broken free and we did test all of them. Same process for all of them. With this uh, setup, as you guys have seen in my previous videos, you can purchase this from MercedesSource.com. It is a very handy tool if you do have a car with fuel injectors. And uh, once they were all tested, we started to put them back together. And here we'll put them all back in order that we took them out. Not that it matters, but um, yeah, we just did it that way. So. So each of the injectors have this retaining clip that you have to slide in after you put the injector in and they all have grommets so make sure everything is in place and then fasten that, um, tighten it up with the retainer and once you tighten the fuel line to the top of the injector um, the retainer helps it from spinning so that is done and then we did have to lift up the wiring harness, removing a couple Allen bolts that held that in. And a final check and tighten of the last injector. Then we will uh, go ahead and try to fire this thing up again. guys we are rolling here cars running it does have a bit of an idle issue right now I'm not giving it gas I think it just hasn't ran in such a long time things need to get to operating temperature and maybe it'll even itself out I mean it's running smooth as heck idles pretty on point Everything's working, temperature's good, heat works, so I think we uh, might be good. Maybe some minor things uh, left, like... Alright guys, this thing is back to life. How sick is this? It is 
idling, very smooth, a little high, and sometimes it'll die, so. Not sure what that is, but. Hey, we got big leap forward, we got it running, so that's awesome. just doing laps in my driveway and I know the mileage is accurate because the trip meter is working if it was not working then I would have known it stopped but Carfax shows true and clusters working so this is awesome the cars driving nice smooth not overheating warmed up pretty sweet I'm gonna go grab some gas for it tomorrow morning. It's freezing, it's like negative five right now, so that's all she wrote for today with this guy. Pull it in, and another one saved, guys. Super sweet. What a treat, getting this thing driving again. Resurrecting a, an old car, like this is always exciting. I think that the um, SRS light is on, just have to reset it, most likely. Um, I think I do have the connector. I have an old school reader, so let's see if I could do that. Um, I gotta show you something really cool. So this thing came with like an aftermarket 80s alarm in this leather pouch. I didn't know what the hell it was because it was all covered, um, but it does work. So you have the lock, it locks, flashes. Now, listen to this. <laughs> oh, wow. It's the craziest, most annoying 80s sound I've ever heard. <laughs> but it does work. And I did find out that this lock, because there's a key, there's a lock in this glove box, and you put the key, and it changes the type of alarm it has. Just spin it in there and changes the type of alarm it has. So that's pretty neat. And these are the sensors, I believe. There's a little flasher there. Let's see if we lock it, if the light's going to flash. Yep, it's flashing. Okay, so the alarm is activated. That's really cool. So shortly after driving the car, we noticed a sporadic idle. With further inspection, we removed the fuel pressure regulator. And I'll show you that guy. And I'll show you what was going on. So here's the $450 part and it is cracked. So there was fuel pissing out of here. And so I ordered a new one from Mercedes. Honestly, that was cheaper than everywhere else. Um, O'Reilly said $700. Um, and then I have some spare parts I'm kind of flipping back and forth from. But for now, I think this is the culprit. And uh, we'll see when I get it. Um, I did detail the engine. As you can see, it looks really nice, and I'm going to go ahead and wait for that part to put it in, and hopefully this thing will be uh, running nice and smooth without having that uh, stalling and erratic idling. If not, then there's a couple other things that are pricey. This car is not cheap by any means. Um, this is your idle air control valve. This is another $400. You have a couple of sensors here and there. Uh, those are like 200 a piece. Um, there's also um, coolant temp sensors, one, two, three, four. There's a pressure switch, an electronic one. 
that's probably another hundred bucks or so. So yeah, all this stuff adds up quickly. So right now we know where we have a uh, problem, so we have to address that and then go from there. So yeah, let's. Uh, I'll check back in with you guys once that part is in. Well, that wraps it up for today's video. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Hopefully, we'll get this thing running right. And then uh, following videos, I'll be detailing it and getting it uh, show-worthy. And then I'll have to uh, change the windshield on it because it is cracked. But a big success. I'm really happy the car is actually running. It's quiet. The exhaust leak is fixed. So we're just checking things off the list and uh, yeah, hopefully those uh, fuel injectors will clean out and this thing will run. So until uh, next time.